Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here with Father Javier, who is a professor and instructor here at the Sarah House of Formation in the Diocese of San Bernardino. And we're just going to um, interview Father Javier, get to know his story, his vocation story, and what brought him here to the point where he's at now. Um, so we can continue to promote vocations, uh, not only this week, but as we go forward uh, past this week and um, into the future as well. So um, without further ado, um, Father Javier, if you'd like just to introduce yourself um, to the audience and what you do here. Yes, uh, warm, warm greetings to all of you. Uh, my name is Father Javier Gonzalez, and it's a great blessing that we are gathered here together first to, to share my vocation story and then um, to be able to promote vocations. And my vocation story um, began in Mexico, the place where I was born and raised in between Zacatecas and Jalisco. I felt my vocation to the priesthood early in life, I would say, since I remember five, six years old. And um, I used to, to do ministry with my mother. I am the, the baby of uh, eight brothers and one sister. And my mother was a missionary, so we would go to the mountains to visit the sick and uh, to, to bring food to those who were in need. And so my early lives uh, were with my mother. And then, since I felt the vocation early in life, uh, I decided to start going to school. And part of the process for me to go to, go to school was uh, to go from the state of Jalisco all the way to the state of Zacatecas. Back then it was one way, I would say around two hours and a half, and then another two hours and a half back then. It was really amazing because uh, as I would go through the mountains, uh, the one thing that would go through my mind always, uh, this personal conversation with God. And, you know, it's interesting because uh, from the very beginning, God in my heart telling me, my son, you are going to be a priest. On the other hand, uh, the whole world telling me it's impossible because even when I was a little one, people would say to me, why? are you doing this, going to the mountains? It's like, what's wrong with you? And of course I couldn't tell them because uh, uh, to tell them that I was going to be a priest, it was like, wow, you're really <laughs> out of your mind. So I did that for a few years and um, I fell in love uh, doing ministry with my mother. Then when I was a teenager, I really felt the call to the priesthood and uh, my mother, uh, she used to do a lot of ministry and she was constantly getting sick. So I decided to quietly um, work hard, get enough money and to come here to the U.S. with the idea um, to work hard and find ways to be a priest. So that's how I, I left my, my mother, my father, and I came here to the United States, specifically to Riverside um, this was to, uh, 1975, uh, May 21st, <laughs> wow. and I got here to my home parish, Our Lady of Guadalupe in Riverside. The moment I got here, um, one of the things I noticed was that I needed to give myself not only a hundred percent to really to be a priest, but m even more. So that meant for me to work um, throughout the night and there in the morning I would go to school, sleep for a few hours, do a little bit of ministry. And I did that for a few years um, until I entered the seminary. And those years were really, really rough, but very good because it allowed me to, to see the realities of our people in their ordinary lives. And the other thing is uh, the generosity of people. Uh, to be without a mother or father is tough. And uh, I am so glad that so many people came to, to help me. Mm -hmm. Simple things like giving me a burrito, giving me a salad. And, and so I am so glad that uh, 
I was able to enter the seminary in the year 1998. And that was really a huge blessing because the opportunity that I was longing for so many years was given to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I was really excited and I was really dedicated because that was um, one given opportunity for me to be a priest that uh, for already for so many years I have worked so much. Mm -hmm. And again, God telling me in my heart, in my spiritual life, in my intimate and personal conversations, we are going to be a priest, my son. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the secular world is like, it's impossible, it's so difficult. And through the grace of God, um, I entered the seminary and those 10 years of being a, pre, uh, uh, being a seminarian were so amazing. Uh, I was able to enjoy them very much, uh, spending quality time in the Blessed Sacrament, listening to the voice of God and, and also um, academics, uh, human formation, pastoral formation, uh, very good friends, very good priests. So those 10 years were really a, a blessing. And then um, after 10 years I, I was ordained. Um, at that time I was 29 years old and um, I was really happy. One of the beautiful gifts that God gave me was uh, to to have in my ordination my mother and my father. That was my request. I told God, well, if this is the gift that you want to give me, I am happy, but maybe done according to your will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, here's where I see, um, especially at, at this point, inside of me, my joy. But a joy in, in, in the commitment of saying yes to the Lord, uh, in moments that were very difficult, but here is where I, I oftentimes tell young people: it's like whatever is worthy in life is difficult, and whatever is difficult, it's worthy in terms of uh, saying yes to God. Then, being ordained, I was blessed to do ministry at Kaiser in Fontana. And, uh, I was a chaplain there, and also I was helping there at St. George uh, Catholic Church in Fontana, and also. <laughs> I, I was really blessed to do ministry with uh, gang members, uh, people from the streets. Uh, that was really amazing because I was with the seal to be a priest and to be mm. with people and the Holy Spirit guided me because there at the, at the hospital I was able to minister to everybody, uh, Catholics, not Catholics. And um, when it came to do ministry with gang members, uh, I used to dress as a basketball player or as a um, soccer player. Back then it was Kobe Bryant, back yeah. those days. So uh, in my reflection, I was thinking, if I go in, I dress as a priest, uh, most likely they will not come to me, especially the gang members. Like, uh, but I will go over there and with my personality, it's kind of gentle, and they will come to me. It's like, hey, how are you doing? It's like, you play soccer, I, I want to give this to you. That would be like marijuana, things like that. It's a simple thing for them. It's like, no, no, thank you. Thank you. I will, I'm always with my rosary. Mm -hmm. And um, as we will go and, and play basketball, and uh, they will say to me, you know, um, you are playing well, but if you try this, oh, it's like, you will be playing amazing. It's like, I don't need that. It's like, so at the end, always they will say to me, are you a policeman? It's like, no, I'm not a policeman. It's like, because you speak a little weird. Like, you know, it's like, you don't speak in the way we speak. Okay, okay, tell me more. It's like, and then they would say, okay, we need to know who are you. They were kind of, and then that's when I would tell them, well, you really, you really want to know? I am a Catholic priest. And um, through the grace of God, the biggest group that came out of gang members, because every year it will be a group that I will, we will be given a year and a half formation. The biggest group was 23 men and women. And they were so amazing because they learned how to live the Christian lifestyle, how to dress, how to relate to their father and their mother. And until now, there's so many blessings. Mm -hmm. So I was there for three years doing this ministry course at the hospital and at the St. George Parish also was amazing. And then from there, I went to Chicago for a year. There, I was able to, to do a little bit of ministry and also to prepare uh, 
to um, promote uh, vocations to the priesthood and religious life. So there, there was a program and I took that program. After a year, I came back here to start doing ministry in the vocation office. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was so amazing because in that ministry, I would go all over the diocese and having a good time and promoting vocation. <laughs> So it's, that, that's precisely why I, I know the diocese so well and I'm really in love with, with our diocese that um, yeah. from, from Neros to uh, Tron and all these places uh, I know them very well and uh, to be able to, to be a companionship with our men and women who are saying yes to God in their vocation. So um, I did that for six years and after six years um, I was blessed uh, to go uh, for further studies to Rome. And there in Rome, um, I was able to, especially to get, um, to prepare um, on the area of catechesis, evangelization, and mission. I was able to get a master's, a pontifical degree on, on these areas. And then, through the grace of God, right after, I was able to get um, a PhD on the whole thing of, of pastoral theology. And you know, see, this is something interesting that oftentimes I tell young people that never to give up in your dreams. Oftentimes we may think, oh, these, are, these dreams are too big because I share this with you. I was telling you that when I was a little one, I would cross these mountains two hours and a half. And in those mountains, I will... I will be dreaming, I will be having these conversations with God, like one day I will be a priest and I will be doing these things, and going to school. And it was impossible because people would say to me, you, you, you are crazy, how are you going to do that? It's like it's difficult to do. And then when I got here, because although I was a minor, I needed to work full time to pay my rent and to buy my food and all that. So instead of going to school as a, uh, any other teenager, I needed to go to work and also go to school, but instead of uh, going to a regular uh, high school, mm -hmm. I was doing my GD. Mm -hmm. So for a few years, this book that you see here, uh, I will put this un over here under with my bicycle. And the days will go, the months will go, and always with my GD at night, you as you can see. <laughs> Even uh, over here is my name back then. And, mm -hmm. And so when I see this uh, with so much work, and now uh, I have finished especially all these studies, including my PhD on pastoral theology, it brings me a sense of humility, but also a sense to tell young people, never give up. Be bold enough. Um, mm -hmm and bring Christ into your life, and as big as your dreams may be, with the help of God, allow those dreams to become real. And of course, for the glory of God, and, course, and for the benefit of our people. So that's how um, I give thanks to God. And now I, I, I finished my, my commitments in Rome, and now that I am back, I am so happy that I did um, a ministry here in St. Adelaide. I was there for a year, beautiful community. And also uh, back then I was helping here also here at the seminary. And at this point, uh, I'm living full time here at the seminary. Uh, I'm really happy, our seminarians really good, our, the staff amazing. I really enjoyed especially the fraternity, mm -hmm. the sense of coming to be together. And at this point, I am a professor. I teach uh, pastoral theology. Also, I am in charge of the Department of Pastoral Ministry. And uh, as I am one of the four mayors. And this is how I, I enjoy life. And the, here, the key, when it comes to, to my vocation, to your vocation, is that to feel a fulfillment of saying yes to God in my own vocation, in your own vocation, is amazing because uh, it brings me so much joy, uh, fulfillment, and the desire to keep going. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, <laughs> maybe a big one, this is my vocation story. And uh, I'm so glad that we're having this conversation. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, um, is it okay if I ask you a couple oh, yes, other questions? Please, uh, just to unpack all of this. Um, firstly, 
uh, you did mention um, how, you know, growing up when you were a little kid, you know, during your childhood, you, you really felt that call. Yes. Um, there may be, you know, some viewers out there that, that might be feeling that as well, maybe a little bit of a little tug. So for you, how did that feel for you? Like, was it something that you felt within your heart? maybe both your mind and heart, you know, what was that feeling like when you were a childhood that, you know, mm -hmm. priesthood was for me? You know, that's a very good question because here, and I always tell young people, um, teenagers, uh, this is um, an internal experience, but oftentimes it, it will be ordinary, but also extraordinary. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. For me, being with my mother in the mountains, visiting the sick, it was cold weather. Uh, it was difficult because it was dark, but inside of me, it was ordinary, but inside of me, there was this presence of God saying, this is for me, this is for me. Mm -hmm. And it will get difficult. That's why, that's why I tell young people, it's like a teenage, it's difficult, but inside of you, there is the voice of God. So. For children, young people, young adults, when they experience this, even in difficult circumstances, but you say, this is inside me telling me that God is calling me to do this, it's, it's amazing. And, but what my, the invitation here has to be, the more it's in the ordinary realities of life, it's even better. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, 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 that's how I felt, and there is a sense of fulfillment. That's, uh, that. And then, if we go to, to, to like another example, the other day we were promoting vocations here in um, uh, Holy Name of Jesus. And there, uh, we were, after we, we promoted vocations, a teenager told his father, uh, Daddy, Daddy, um, when can I go with Father Javier to the seminary? Because I feel something inside of me. <laughs> so uh, you can see that is also giving answer to what you are uh, yeah. asking me. And it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful because um, it's so real, but also so transcendental. The divine coming to be with us. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's amazing. Another quick question for you. Um, so you... You also mentioned, um, you know, you, you felt this call and, you know, you had to do something about it, right? You had to pursue that call that, that God was mm -hmm. putting in your heart um, or in your life. Um, was it difficult, you know, to, because you're from Zacatecas, right? Zacatecas, so Jalisco. So you were born in Zacatecas. Um, it was difficult for you to leave your home, your hometown to come here. Uh, I'm assuming it was. Um, but you knew that you were coming here for a purpose. That purpose was to become a priest for, for, for the church. So for those that are listening, what would you, what would you tell them, you know, as maybe a word of advice or, or advice mm -hmm. for them? It, it's going to be difficult for them to take that leap of faith, just like you did, mm -hmm. you know, coming here to, to study for a priesthood. What advice would you give those that are listening in order to take that next step, if they're scared to take that next step? Um, because, you know, your yes to God opened doors for you that you didn't even know mm -hmm. were going to be there in your life to studying in Rome, to getting your PhD. So what is it? What, what advice can you give to these, the these first, listeners? The first thing is that whatever is worthy comes with many challenges and is difficult. Uh, we see our Lord Jesus Christ in the crucifixion. Uh, it was difficult, but it was very much worthy. So for, for young people, for you young people, um, nowadays uh, there are so many challenges, uh, difficult things, but inside of you to know that it's worthy. Now, here, uh, how do we come to know that it is worthy? How do we come to know that it's meaningful and full, uh, it brings fulfillment? Here is one thing that oftentimes we take for granted, and that is to have an intimate and permanent relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is when you, you see through the eyes of Jesus. 
that's where you are being uh, transformed, your mind is being colored uh, through the lenses of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, that's so important, so um, for you young people, it's so important to continue embracing this intimate and permanent relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. Because by doing that, uh, if there is confusion, this brings clarity to you. Uh, if there are challenges, as many as there are, there are solutions. But in that context of being intimate, connected with our Lord Jesus Christ. As many questions that, that you and I may have, in those encounters with our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you come to have the answers. I remember many times here, being here in Riverside, I was, I was hungry because I was a teenager, and I would go to houses in my encounter, in daily encounters with our Lord Jesus Christ, go and knock the door. And I was so praised that people always gave me something to eat. Again, out of this encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ, saying to me, I am taking care of you. You just keep going, keep going. And as you know, um, for you um, young people and for all of us, uh, we have the opportunity to trust. And it goes back to this um, personal encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But what you are asking is so important to really uh, consider. And then the other question that I bring to myself and to others often is, why not? Why not give it a try to see how Jesus Christ is guiding you into that direction? And, and it's so beautiful. And it's so beautiful to do that. So thank you for asking that question. That's really yeah, good. Too. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah. Thank you for your time, Father Javier. Um, you know, this is hopefully for the viewers out there throughout this week to continue to think about. Um, but like I said at the beginning, um, not just this week, but you know, going forward as well. Um, there are many questions that that you can um, continue to ask yourself, but ultimately, like Father Javier said, it's continuing to develop that that personal relationship with Christ. So, before we go, last question for you, Father Javier: What is the number one thing that you know teenagers, children, young adults, young people that they can do? to continue developing that relationship with Christ. One little thing that they can change in their life mm -hmm. that will help them to, you know, make that relationship stronger. Wonderful. First of all, I am looking at you. <laughs> to have this personal and intimate relation with our Lord Jesus Christ as their priority. If that is your priority, everything develops from there. And that means, let's go to the specifics. Whether it's early in the morning, at midday, or before you go to sleep, you have this time to be with our Lord Jesus Christ. And what happens here, and this is so beautiful, uh, at the end of the day, to have this as a priority, to share with our Lord Jesus Christ, how was your day, how was my day? And to see how Jesus Christ has been throughout the day. And when you young people, when I as a priest, when we come to see how Jesus Christ was there in the morning to your father, to your mother, to your teacher, to your friends, how Jesus Christ spoke to you in different ways. So when you are able already to connect in that way, and even when it comes to vocations, when somebody says to you, it's like, have you ever thought of becoming a priest? <laughs> it's like, at the end of the day, when you are having this intimate relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ, like, you are telling Jesus, is that you through this person? And so that becomes a priority. And once you, you have that as a priority, uh, it, became, it becomes a daily encounter, a daily encounter. And it's essential it's so important to have that and it's so simple but also the more you do it the more it develops as a natural thing where it's so beautiful when when we encounter our Lord Jesus Christ with a big smile it's like you know 
after, at the end of this day, it was so beautiful. Thank you for helping me. It's like, uh, tomorrow we do it again together. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's so, I am so glad that you, uh, you brought that question. And uh, we, we continue um, praying for one another. And uh, in my own personal uh, experience, when it comes to vocations, uh, I truly believe that we have many vocations to priesthood, religious life, married life. I am pretty sure that many of you who are listening to this uh, video, to this, uh, my vocation story, uh, who, those of you who are watching this, you are, fe you are feeling the vocation um, in your own reality. And I say to you, that's a gift from God, but we have to to find ways to take care of one another, of this one vocation that God has given you. And to take care of this vocation with a sense of companionship, joy, tenderness. Because of course, our Lord Jesus Christ wants all of us to follow him, but precisely um, imitating him, being loving, compassionate, joyful, and also willing to work hard. <laughs> so, um, I am glad that uh, our young people they are open to, to listen and to say yes to the one vocation that God has given them. And uh, uh, together we can make the difference. Uh, now is the time for you and for me to keep saying yes to our Lord Jesus Christ and the one vocation that God has given you. Priesthood, religious life, merry life, or single life. And in that way we rejoice. So, Thank you so much for these beautiful questions and the opportunity yeah, to, to do this. And here in the diocese, we are so blessed to have Father Howe. So for you, uh, with your vocation, um, don't hesitate to, to give Father Howe a phone call. And it's like, here I am. And guide me and allow me to, to say yes to God by entering into religious life, priesthood, or, or married life. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Father Javier, and all of those listening. Um, Thank you again for following along. And again, our hope is just that you continue to open your heart and your, your opportunity to the Lord, wherever that may take you. So thank you, Father. By saying that, we are going to conclude with a simple prayer. So as we surrender, because whatever we do, whatever we say, we do it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for the glory of God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we adore you, we glorify you, and we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come together to prepare this presentation, to give witness of who we are. Thank you. Thank you for the many vocations that you are giving us. Thank you for our youth, our children, our young adults, our priests, our bishops our late people, our married people. Thank you for being so good and loving to each one of us. We consecrate to you as together we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou most women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sins, now and the hour of our death, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, and ever shall, shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Praise Father. the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you.